Okay, so for this part of the lab, what we're going to do is take a look at some resistors in series. And before we do that, uh, this is uh, part one of the lab, uh, the series circuit. First, we have to actually measure the resistance of these resistors. So what I'm going to do is turn on my multimeter. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm in the right range here for taking the resistances. Now, because I have already set out my resistors, I know they go up to 470 for resistor number three and lower values for that. I know that setting it on 200 is just a little bit too low. In fact, if I set it to 200 and go across that 440 hertz, or excuse me, 440 ohm, 470 ohm resistor, you'll see I run into trouble. I don't get a good reading for that. Whereas if I turn it to 2000, and measure that, I get something that's a little bit closer to reasonable. Okay, so I've got set on the right area. One of the biggest mistakes that people make with this lab and with working in electronics in general is that you forget to move the dial to the right spot. Okay, the other thing you want to watch out for is if there's a little battery symbol here, your battery's getting low and you're going to get all kinds of weird values for things. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure these. And of course, in your lab book, you're going to be writing these down. All I'm doing is I'm going to take and carefully keep these in order. I'm going to measure this first one. And you can see the value right there. Notice it will vary a little bit if I put a little more pressure, a little less pressure. So if you're doing this one at home, make sure you hold it steady. So that's my value for that one. Okay, the next one down, hopefully should be about 220. So I'm going to measure that. And that looks pretty good. So I do want to make sure that I don't get these out of alignment. This is the third one down. Hopefully it'll be around 470 like it was earlier. Notice that the value for it isn't going to be quite perfect. That's okay. We have some tolerance built into that. And hopefully when you fill out your data table, you'll see that you get pretty darn close. Okay, the next two down. Measure this one. This is resistor number four. You can see the value for that one. And you can also now get resistor number five. Whoops, and it looks like I have mixed up something here a little bit. Notice that is not anywhere near 10 ohms. So what I want to do is go back to my set of resistors and make sure I get the right one. Let's try this guy. Now this is not uncommon. The markings on these are very small. So if you get a value that's very weird, that things don't seem to be working out quite right, it might be a mathematical mistake you made, or it might be that your eyes just aren't quite sharp enough to catch the right colors on those resistors. So that's a bit better for resistor 5. So just as a note, and I have it written down here to remind myself, this resistor on number 4, some of the lab kits were shipped with 20 ohm resistors and some were shipped with 22 ohm resistors. 22 ohm resistors are actually just a slight bit more popular. So it's a possibility that you might have one of those um, like I did in this particular kit. Some of the other kits you might have 20 ohms. It doesn't really matter what it is. 
when you do your calculations though, when you do your measurements, make sure that you are accounting for the proper size. Okay, so that's the first part. We've got our setup. Make sure between steps you turn your power off and then back on. The batteries on these will go dead. If you get into the habit of turning it off every time you're done, then you won't make the mistake of putting it away at the complete end of the experiment with the uh, voltmeter on, multimeter on, and run your batteries down.